Well, the big driver is all the uncertainty that the CEOs mm. are seeing. <clears throat> and if you look at last year, we had a record number of optimism and a record <laughs> jump. We've had just the reverse this time. When we've had that increase in pessimism, both in terms of perspectives on the global economy, but equally as important and perhaps more so, their perspectives of am I able to raise revenues in the next mm. 12 months? So the degree of difficulty with that uncertainty is really coming to the forefront for the CEOs. And the question over revenues, is this coming over the fears about a changing global growth picture? Because we did get that tweak from the IMF yesterday, but many are saying some of those fears are based around risks that may not even come into fruition. Well, there's a number of risks that the CEOs raise each and every year. Some of them are controllable, some are not. <clears throat> and the ones that are new this year are, in fact, the trade conflicts that are outside of their mm. control, per se. The policy issues when you think about the EU and Brexit, the combination of climate change and other aspects like that. But the reality is, what we see is a degree of pessimism, but it's actually got to be looked at from a company-by-company company perspective. There's those right. that see great opportunity. And if they have sure. strength in their balance sheet, strength in their leadership team and the right skill sets and data to make better decisions, there's opportunity even in this world of pessimism mm -hmm. right now. We would agree with the IMF's trajectory in terms of lower growth rate. Our CEO survey over the last 22 years has actually been correlated very well to a predictive nature of GDP. It was interesting in your survey, too, that the biggest drop, I believe, was among North American CEOs. Do you think this is related to fears over the changing picture in the U.S. with fiscal stimulus fading? It's a combination of things. I think you ran into a high last year coming off right. of the combination of the stimulus coming out of tax reform, the combination of regulatory reform and the like. And what you have now is actually not much more upside being seen. Mm. You see a little bit more downside with the political agenda, trade conflicts, and no promise or hope for anything else like infrastructure, etc. So you add that to the combination of a really difficult economic yeah. environment from the geopolitical or sorry, from an Asia perspective, coupled with disruption from technology, of which CEOs are struggling with, do I have the right sure. talent to deal with that challenge as well? You talk about concerns that perhaps there won't be anything in the way of an infrastructure stimulus. Do you think the U.S. government shut down the stalemate that has been just grabbing has really hit that home. People are saying, oof, we're not going to get any cooperation in Washington. So look, I think the combination of the shutdown in and of itself, which has a negative implication on GDP, and I think there was a prediction earlier, uh, late last week rather, mm. every week there's a 0.1 percentage point off of GDP. We've been at this four weeks already. You add that coupled with the uncertainty for both sides to get something done, that's a big uncertainty yeah. that everybody's worried about. And the question is, again, where are those hot spots that can take advantage of them? And with President Trump not here in Davos, certainly many will be looking to a meeting coming up in Washington with Chinese leaders as they do try to work on a trade deal here. Do you think if, in fact, we get a deal out of those upcoming meetings, that that will go a long way in removing some of the pessimism out there? I think it will remove some of the pessimism. I'm not sure it's going to remove all of the pessimism. Mm. When you take a look at economic factors and trends, even those trade conflicts, it will actually reduce the risk there, but necessarily not make it go away. Mm. When you look at the combination of the disruptive factors that are out right. there, and the other thing that let's look at Europe, we don't have a solution there, sure. nor is anything seen on the table to be prob uh, possible. So I think the many things. In fact, if you look at the risks last year, we had a few that were really dominated by all CEOs. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a huge list. Yeah. So it's actually the amount of risks and the different type of risks that are really worrying the CEOs in terms of how they execute and achieve their strategy going forward.